Stem cells are something that has been drawing a lot of attention within the scientific community right now because of its massive future potential for healthcare and for the progression of science. So, all the stem cells are all over headlines and the media and the news and even maybe school. What exactly are stem cells? Stem cells are basically um, cells that have the potential to be tricked into any kind of tissue. Um, this is basically explaining it in a diagram, but human embryos consist entirely of stem cells in their early stages. And gradually, the cells of this embryo commit themselves to a pattern of differentiation. If these green blobs are the stem cells, then um, these stem cells will all have the potential to become any one of these cells. So like a neuron, a red blood cell, and whatever type of cell. This just rep represents like all other types of cells. So, um, all these stem cells will have the potential to become this or this or this. And all after these stem cells differentiate, then they turn into cells that make up us. So all our um, skin cells, our hair, like hair follicle cells, and stuff like that. They all eventually well, they all initially started as stem cells. So, if you didn't um, understand that concept, here is a simple analogy to help you along that process. And basically, I hope you all know who Harry Potter is. Um, Harry but Harry Potter, he's a wizard. And he studied at a school called Hogwarts. And Hogwarts basically had four houses, um, which is Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, and Ravenclaw. And there was those four houses, right? And Harry Potter, before he came to Hogwarts, he had the potential to become any one of those four houses. He could have been Hufflepuff, he could have been Ravenclaw, and this is all chosen by this um, sorting hat over here. And this sorting hat basically... Um, you put it on a little, like, wizard's head, and then it shouts out, like, Gryffindor or, like, Hufflepuff or something like that. So, Harry Potter had the potential to become any one of those four houses. And he, um, when he wore the hat, he became differentiated into Gryffindor. So, Harry Potter is basically a stem cell. He has the potential to become any one of those four houses. And after this process of differentiation is represented by the sorting hat, and after differentiation, Harry Potter has become into a member of the Gryffindor house. So a uh, Gryffindor could be like a red blood cell. So stem cell became differentiated into red blood cell. So now that I hope you understand the um uh, the kind of basic meaning or like working of a stem cell. Here is a more complex diagram and this starts with the embryo. So because lots of stem cells are obtained from embryos, so this is just a basic um, method in how stem cells are taken. So it first starts with the embryo. This is the egg and the sperm about to unite here. And then it eventually it develops into the morula, and it says totipotent here. And even though it sounds really complicated and like an SAT word, um, it's basically if you break this word down, it says toti, which means total, and potent, which means potential, which means this has a total potential to become anything. So this is a morula is just basically a ball of cells that have undergone mitosis, which is like the division of cells, and it has the total potential to become any type of cell. So, um, the cells in a morula can become a skin cell, can become a white blood cell, and yeah, it can become anything. It's cool. Next, it the cells develop into a blastocyst, and the only 
Well, a difference between the blastocyst and the morula is that a blastocyst has um, outer and inner layers. And the pluripotent stem cells, which are usually used um, in 2014, um, are the inner mass cells of the embryo. They are pluripotent. And if you break down this word again, pluri, which means, um, well, you could say partial, potent, which means potential, so it has partial potential. So they, the pluripotent stem cells already know their destination. They basically know what they're going to be differentiated to. And although it would be easier to use totipotent stem cells, that would lead to complete destruction of the embryo. However, if you use the blastocyst, scientists are trying to find out how to extract some pluripotent stem cells without completely destroying the embryo. So basically, if you use the morula, and take these cells, obviously it's easier because the morula has, is totipotent. It has total potential to become anything in contrast to the, the pluripotent cells, which only have partial potential. But in taking the cells from the morula, you are completely destructing the embryo, whereas scientists are right now are trying to figure out how to take um, these inner mast cells from the blastocyst without completely destroying the um, embryo and if they succeed in that it can continue to become a human fetus but if the um, stem cells are taken the stem cells that are taken from the blastocyst um, they have the potential to become um, such a circulatory system so maybe like a red blood cell nervous system so a neuron and immune system so things such as like the white blood cell now Let's go into the difference between stem cells and normal cells. So, stem cells are not differentiated. I think this is about my 100th time repeating this in the video. And I know it's really annoying, but this is a very important concept to grasp that stem cells are not differentiated, which means that they have not yet specialized into a certain type of cell to carry us, um, to, in contrast to normal cells. Cells and multicellular organisms differentiate. So, for example, a multicellular organi organism is basi basically an organism with a lot of different types of cells. So, an example would be us. And these cells differentiate to carry out specialized functions by expressing some of their genes but not others. Another difference is that stem cells are self sustaining, so they can divide for long periods of time in contrast to normal cells which have a finite lifespan. So if you want to be, if you choose to be one cell, a single cell, you should choose to be a stem cell because they're self-sustaining. Not really, but longer than normal cells. So we've been going on and on about stem cells and how awesome they are and what potential they have. But what's an actual real life example? That would be um, the example of therapeutic stem cell use. And this is used for diseases such as leukemia, which is a type of cancer in which abnormally large numbers of white blood cells are produced in the bone marrow. So if you've heard of leukemia, possibly you have. It, ha um, it occurs a lot in children, and there are a lot of books that have come out of of the story of leukemia where a um, child dies of leukemia or something like that um, you usually cry in those books a book such as Kira 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 was a really good book it's about leukemia a girl uh, with leukemia but anyway um, so but stem cells have the potential to cure children with leukemia which is obviously a huge success and a huge you know, progress in science, and this is, um, you can do that by inserting, or is inserting a large needle, as shown here. A large needle is inserted into a large bone, and fluid is removed from the b bone marrow. Stem cells are extracted from this fluid, and high dose of chemotherapy drugs is given to the patient to kill all cancer cells, and then the stem cells are returned back into the patient's body. So... Chemotherapy 
is basically a treatment in which it targets the cancer cells and how they do this is by targeting chemotherapy basically targets fast growing cells as cancers cancer cells are cells that they multiply at an extremely fast rate and but doing chemotherapy also kills lots of other healthy cells and in Putting the stem cells back into the patient's body, as stem cells, of course, have the potential to become any different type of cell, it, it could then be manipulated into becoming a healthy cell and performing all the functions that the chemotherapy destroyed. So, it could potentially cure someone with leukemia. But, with scientific progress always comes an ethical debate that arises. Um... This is basically summarizing the art, like a lot of arguments that are out there. It goes down to two sides: the pro stem cell, which support stem cell, and anti stem cells, which do not support stem cells. A very um, a core argument of the anti stem cell um, team, shall we say, is that the source of the stem cell. They, they are emphasizing the source of the stem cell, as some stem cells are taken from embryos. And an embryo is human life even at the earliest stage, and if the embryo dies as a result of the procedure to extract the stem cells, it is immoral. They are saying that life has ended because of the um, extraction of stem cells, and benefits from therapies using embryonic stem cells do not justify the taking of a life. On the other hand, the pro-stem cell research team can argue that early stage embryos are little more than balls of cells that have yet to develop the essential features of human life. Early stage embryos lack a nervous system, so they do not actually feel pain or suffer in other ways during stem cell procedures. And other arguments that large numbers of embryos are actually produced by in vitro fertilization but they are never implanted back into the mother's uterus, so they do not get a chance of life anyway. And rather than kill these embryos, it is better to use stem cells from them to treat diseases and save lives. So, evidently, this is a very um, serious ethical debate and something that people must take into consideration while thinking about stem cell research and thinking about the benefits and disadvantages of stem cell research. But think about what, which side you're, you're arguing and make sure that you can support your argument. There are many debates out there online and on the news and the media and there's a lot of um, things out there. So make sure that you know which side you're arguing and why. Thank you for watching.